So today, I am hoping to find some clarity to the situation. I'm not going to call it anything else right now. Uh, with my great grandfather, Jesse Uppercue. I'm meeting with criminal justice historian David Walcott, who's asked an archivist to pull some documents about the murder. I really want to know if my great grandfather actually committed this crime, and if so, what his motive might have been. I found this article. I actually can't tell him what actually happened. I mean, he tells the story of someone retreating from the room. Why did they choose to arrest him? It seems like the police are not believing your great-grandfather's story about a man being in a room and running out. Instead, it seems like Jesse Uppercue had the means and the opportunity to have killed her, and he was the one there. So they're focusing on him in the investigation, and okay. they've chosen to arrest him. OK. Let's take a look at some newspapers and try to okay. figure out what exactly happened. Right. Baltimore Sun, July through December, 1872. Okay, so it's a real newspaper, wow. This is the old-fashioned way. So your article is My first, August 28th. Yeah. Let's look for August 29th, 29th or 30th or 31st. 29th, Friday morning, August 30th. Saturday morning, August 31st. Oh, okay, 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 I found something. The Lombard Street Homicide. Further particulars in the case, the will of the murdered lady. This will, which is the second one executed by the deceased, was found at the house where the murder was committed. So that means that this is her second will? So she right. has rewritten her will. Right. Why would you rewrite your will? I mean, we might be able to learn more from the, from the rest okay. of the article about that. It is learned that both the wills mentioned were executed on the one day, July 26th, 1872, under the following circumstances, a month before this murder. Yes, it seems that way. On the day named, the young man, my great-grandfather, summoned Mr. Bannon to the old lady's house where she desired to be left alone with the lawyer. This, this person, um, Bannon... He's the lawyer for the aunt who was okay. killed. Okay, okay. A will was drawn, some donations were made to a Methodist Protestant church and to different persons in small amounts, and the balance to young upper Q, then amounting to about $22,000. With inflation, it's a little over 400000 That's a lot of money. So that's a lot of money back then. The young upper Q insisted upon a reading of the will and in indicated dissatisfaction with the church donation. He induced the aunt to have another drawn in which these donations were abandoned. There was a will drawn up, and literally right after that will was drawn up, a second will was made. Right. He's not happy with the first will, so while the lawyer is still there, he insists that the lawyer draw up a second will, getting rid of the donations right. and giving everything to him. That's crazy. I was actually wondering, you know, about a motive, a possible motive for this murder. And now, you know, I'm, I'm getting information about money and uh, a lot of money. I'm wondering if in, you know, in, in court documents, if it does get to the bottom of, of this. Well, let's look at the records from the Baltimore courts. Okay. September term, 1872. Oh, my gosh. So at the front, there's an index. Oh, thank God. Upper Q. Page 74. So page 74. Here it is. This is the state of Maryland versus Jesse W. Upper Q. October 4th, 1872. What would this be? Plea non culp. Not culpable in Latin or not guilty. And what's all this? So this is all the witnesses that come. <gasps> There's so many people. So the left side here is the prosecution okay. witnesses, and then the right side is the, the defense witness. Oh, wow. And it's about an equal amount of people. Right. It's largely a circumstantial case. He's arrested because he has the means, the opportunity, and apparently a motive. Right. But his character becomes one of the deciding factors. Uh, December 16th, so after a two-week trial, says a uh, jury not being able to agree in discharge. Is discharged. Is discharged. Which means that they decide, they couldn't decide the case. Right, it means what, we have what's called a hung jury, that they just couldn't reach a conclusion. Right. Wow. 
Down here, though, this is a reference to a second case. Mm -hmm. Number 57. Jan term 1873. Great. I mean, not great, but <laughs> okay. What does that mean for a prosecution in that, in that sense? So the fact that they bothered to have a second trial right. suggests that at least in the eyes of the prosecutors, they had a real case and they really could get a guilty verdict. Okay. The archivists have brought over the court records from the next year. Oh, just one you. Here we are, page nine. Okay. Here's a second trial. Then March 6, 1873. Verdict. Not guilty. He's found not guilty. And once he's found not guilty, it's done. The prosecutors can't bring it back so again. They closed the case. It was done. It's in his past now. Right. Wow. Okay. Do we know if he got the inheritance? There's no documentation that I've been able to find. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of still in, in a place of unease with how I feel about my great-grandfather right now. I do feel like if, if I was sitting on that jury, I would have a hard time really calling him an innocent. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering what happens as, after he walks away a free man. We need to find the next place he shows up in the historical records, which might be the next census in 1880. Okay. The way to find that is to try to look for it on Ancestry.com. Great. So now I'm searching for Jesse Upper Q. We want the 1880 census. Here we have age 30. He's married. Spouse's name, L. I. Upper Q. That's not my great grandmother. There was obviously a family before my great grandmother. So if he was, if he walked away a free man at age of 23, he must have married her right away because they have a six year old right. daughter. And it looks like there's two more kids there too. These are people I've never heard of. This was a whole life he had before he met my great-grandma. 